Hi everybody and welcome. This is Hugh's friend. <laughs> Hughes. <laughs> Hughes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hugh Fraser. But there's a bunch of um, yeah. beautiful upright bass player, both in person, as a musician, and on the outside also. We're all beautiful people. And uh, today we get together, we're gonna to play a bit and also um, we've got some upcoming concerts. And uh, what we actually uh, found as a center point to our conversations was a very interesting topic about uh, uh, music and what it means to be able to project our feelings to others, what we have to do in comparison to what we might see on social media. So everybody, Hugh Fraser. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Hugh, we were talking about um, music mindfulness the other day. It was, actually, it was actually a concept, the definition of such, that you introduced me to that. Because I was actually considering like, oh, yeah, when, when I'm playing music, I'm always being in the moment. I'm actually more worried about uh, feeling and, and playing what I'm hearing. And you, and you summarized that as music mindfulness. So we've got to hear a cheat sheet of questions that I want to ask you. So... What is music a, a mindfulness for you? Well, I, I guess it was just a, a, a term that I kind of appropriated, uh, that I thought was useful to describing the, the 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 state that we find ourselves in as players and as listeners. Like, what 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 sort of roles do do players and, and listeners perform? Because yeah. music requires listening. Um, but as players, for me, the best music is music where I can hear the players listening to each other. Um, and that is a kind of an in-the-moment kind of mindful state, I think, as, as, as de defined by our modern sort of mindfulness movements, which come out of this sort of, I guess, this meditation kind of... Uh, uh, a, a kind of a musical meditation. Not that meditation is not um, defined in my mind as the absence of something. It is opening your thinking to kind of everything in a yeah. way. These yeah. are very vague terms, but then music's, yeah. a, music's a very subjective, vague art. Yeah. But it's just about being op open to being in the moment to either like or not like what you're hearing, which so, in a sense... It, so in a way, like what we are with, to be in the moment means you are with other people. Yeah. We are not alone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we are in the moment and we're actually sharing mm. with the audience, mm. of course, mm. and uh, with others. Mm. So it's not, it's not about us anymore. Mm. No? Mm. It's not about you or me. Uh, in the, as individuals, it's mm. about like this. What does the feel I get? Mm. That you're there, I'm here, and we're playing together. Excuse me, we're playing together for this. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're like, you know, like there's an entity there. Yeah. there's an entity, and I'm playing, and we're feeding that entity. Yeah, and you're feeding yeah. into it. Yeah. And we're listening to each other, yeah. and we're seeing the result, and we're adapting. Mm. If there's another musician, then the audience is feeding into that mm. sphere, mm. and then listening to it, and uh, we're all like. In a way, it could be like a communion, like what religions yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, Meditation yeah, focuses yeah, on yeah. Uh, love, yeah, yeah, friendship, yeah, sharing. Yeah. Now, imagine that what I'm sure everybody um, go through that every day of their life. Take away that thing that we're sharing, mm. and it's just about you. Mm. It doesn't feel good. At least I don't feel good mm, mm, playing mm. without considering that I'm going to share something. Mm, mm. It's excruciate, cruciate. It's, it hurts. Mm. Like no. Man. Well, it's no. not what it's not what we do. It's what other music can do, and and with no disrespect. I mean, we love pop music. We 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 love star, you know, stars delivering us. We love icons of music. You know. Being up there, being sort of like um, godheads, yeah, you know, of, of of our popular culture or whatever. But but it's not. That's that's one thing, which is which is great. But people, I think, people enjoy 
and occasionally are reminded, and maybe it's a smaller group of people, that's fine, whatever, it, it doesn't matter, but they're reminded of that deeper, like commu- you use the word communion, which I also think, so think is a nice, a, a nice word. You know, there's lots of communion with me- mega churches, not, yeah. not to disparage anything, but, you know, where, you know, 50,000 people in a, in a stadium uh, taking a, some sort of communion. It can't be as personal as 10 people in a room no. doing the same thing. No, no, no. But it serves a purpose, it and I'm not going to say that purpose is invalid. Um, I love going to... Well, actually, I don't go to stadium concerts anymore. I went to see Paul McCartney, okay. with, along with 20,000 other people. But, um, uh, but that's because Paul McCartney's like a living icon... Of a cultural icon who, in, and Paul McCartney knows that if he didn't do all the old hits, we'd feel, you know, that our shared nostalgia, but the bubble would be burst. But there's that other thing about more, more intimate, and and traditionally, say mindfulness or meditation is considered a, a sort of a solitary pursuit, but it's a solitary pursuit where you're you're kind of tapping into a kind of maybe maybe that kind of esoteric oneness. And, but we can do that with music, with music, I think. And and if we, and, and I'm always full of admiration for people who who walk into a, an audience space where kind of I think that's their kind of expectation too, is, is for for the for the, the 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 smaller community, the more intimate community, the more the the more. It's it's a beautiful thing to be able to. Performing and to, to listen to, as well as all that other big, huge. Yeah, we've got the, like, the, the fame, the artists, that's great, the showmanship. Yeah. But that's there. it's an important balance to all of that is that other thing of the, the listening. The listening, I would add the sharing. And the sharing. And yeah, the sharing, sharing the listening, the sharing. the sharing, the awareness. Now, we've been playing for a long time. Uh, over 40, 50 years maybe, each of us. So we've got 100 years of experience here. So this is a lot. Mm. We're not saying we don't... Uh, we're not into... I believe that we're not into music for that... Uh, for, we're into music for the long term. It's a way of living. Mm. Mm. Can we live life without mindfulness as a musician? Can we uh, move forward focusing... Imagine, like, I'm the artist. I'm, like, the symbol. I am, actually, mm. the idol. Mm. Can my music move forward in that direction and feel good about it as a musician? Or, for example, showmanship. Mm. We were talking about the other day, like, I'm great, I can, I can play very quickly, I can do a lot of things, so in a way that it is an accomplishment, it's mm. a difficulty accomplishment, mm. but can we move forward? And I like to say that, is that um, as a musician, I cannot. Mm. I started and I was very fancy my playing. Mm. Mm. I can, mm. but it doesn't feel good. Mm. So to actually feel like in a way that I'm just creating like, wow, 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 wow. Mm. No, it doesn't feel good. Mm. It feels good for about one show, but afterwards it doesn't. So I say it to myself that after I've toured and after I've been with musicians and also in terms of artists, mm. about artists who actually create that artistic, that idol figure mm. and suddenly... They disappear. Mm. They're lost. They mm. fall into anxiety. They fall into depression, into chaos, into drinking, into alcohol. Mm. It's a world out there. You're saying, what's going on? Mm. I'm saying, isn't it as simple as that? You're up there, mm. but you're not up there. You just have that capability of sharing. And all we have to do is continue the same thing that made you start music, which is actually, I've got a story. I've got something to share. It's not my own personal feeling. It's about what's there in the middle between all of us and maybe that Mm. would be the way the only way to continue so my question is that can we develop a music for a long term career without that music mindfulness and I can't have any thought of no why because I've got good friends that they end up with um, problems with their hands Mm. they can't play say why Mm. I'd say it's about playing the guitar in a way, or the, the instrument, that you're not aware of the damage you're doing to it. Now, mm. if you're always doing something with that fun, 
are like, oh, it's enough. No, 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 it's enough. Oh, no, no. It's sort of like those limits, which are the limits. Then there's no minimum, there could be minimum damage to that. So I've got friends that can't play anymore. Mm. Or friends that, that are, for example, that are concert players, that they go onto the piano and they can't play anymore. Mm. They say, they don't feel good. Is that something's missing there? Mm. Is that, that process along the way, something stopped. So that stopping is actually the enjoyment. Mm. You can't enjoy music unless you're sharing it and you get a feedback. Mm. So, can my question to you, that's what I've already answered my question, but to you, is that can we pursue a career in music long term without that mindfulness? Uh, well, yeah, I think I, I personally would find it difficult. I, I think it, w without sort of blithely sort of uh, stating we're all individuals, um, uh, I, th I can't do that. I was, like you say, more, more virtuosic, capable of, of, of feats of, of musical daring do when I was younger and more athletic musician. Yeah, and yeah. I think we get that. That's kind yeah. of what you're referring to. Um, musical athleticism. And that also, kind of when we're younger, that kind of appeals to us more. And not excluding the obvious observation that some of the great musicians that we enjoy, for, like Chick Corea right up to the moment where he unfortunately had to stop because he wasn't he wasn't alive anymore, seemed to be capable of a, a, of a unlimited technical potential. Um, but there was still something about Chick that the, the the moments as I grew older it wasn't those moments of, of, of athletic daring do that appealed to me about Chick Corea. It was those deeper moments where where he revealed his his true deep state of, of as a listener. As a listener and 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 a and a, and a, and a musician of, of of rich substance, that I'd go, oh yeah, well that's that's chick. Same with Herbie Hancock, you know. Yeah. You, you know. Um, and with Miles Davis. And, and we, we, yeah. So so there are those guys that that we acknowledge are the true greats of our our industry, and for whatever um, set of circumstances. Uh, They've they've created that 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 individual being that they are of of true greatness. Um, music doesn't just exist at that higher echelon. Like art, art isn't just about going to a gallery and looking at Picasso if you are want a modernist re yeah. relatively, and and Renoir if you want a traditionalist, and, and and Monet if you want impressionism. It's about all those other artists. As well, and and there's yeah. millions, yeah. and you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and also about the fact that we can go into a small uh, community in a, in a foreign country, and we can hear music that has an honesty and an, an integrity. And the greats of our music have a have a great way of reminding us that they're honest and and integrity and truly unbelievably exceptional. But then music as a as a way of communicating honesty, integrity, and and and, um, and beauty or, or ugliness or any anything yep, yep. that's up, entirely up to the listener. You know, it's 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 a very. I, I I like John Cage's words where he said he doesn't want music to tell him what to think. He, he Cage sort of talked about just sort of being in the moment, hearing sound. He yep. talked about it with just sound. Yep. He, but but. I think that's also the power of instrument, instrumental music. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't give you a, a you know, sort of a, a, a four lines of a, of a poetic kind of um, uh, composition that just tells you what to think. You know, uh, like go out and dance or whatever. Um, it's so suggestive of what you where you are in the moment that you're listening to that piece of music. And that, because I can't be... I'm, not, I'm just... I, I, I didn't really have all that much interest in being the kind of virtuoso, because that kind of leaves me a little bit cold. Because I can... Unless they're really, really great guys, an average person trying to be virtuosic just... I, don't, I know what they're doing. 
you know what they're doing. Yeah. We're, 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 we're very experienced listeners as well as players. So we know what we're hearing. And we go, yeah, but that's not really that interesting. Whereas when you hear somebody like a Bill Frizzell or a Charlie yeah. Hayden or those yeah. guys that are yeah. really sparse and open, you hear this incredible listening when you, when you listen to them. I mean, superficially, you hear this wonderful aesthetic thing within their music, but you hear the incredible depth of their listening. Their listening is, is elevated to, to the same uh, pinnacle of, of art that, that a great technical virtuoso is. So virtuosic listening, how's that when you... <laughs> virtuoso listening, directional. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Hayden, or as I'd say, being in the moment, mm. it's spatial. Yeah, yeah. You can hear it, the music yeah. expands in all yeah. directions. Um, other types of music are just in one direction of one person. Yeah. And it's not only if it's an analogue or digital recording, which might enhance that also, but it's the way people yeah. play. That yeah. some people are playing this and some people are playing the space. Yeah. I remember like um, going to my initial funk concerts with my, uh, I know the name in Spanish, Marcel Parker. Marcel Parker. Mm. That was just a few years ago, so it's not an initial. They take about an hour to warm up. Mm. So you go on stage and say, no, nah, not there yet. And after an hour, they, they, you can start feeling the vibes. Mm. What are they doing? What are they doing there? Mm. They're feeling the space. Mm. Until mm. they say, no, nah, it's not there. The musicians are not listening to the, each other. Mm. They're not synced. The audience is not synced. After an hour, well, it's synced. And there on stage comes the sax player, Marcel mm. Parker. Mm. And he's ready to groove. And you're saying, mm. wow, it has taken an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes an hour. Yeah. Even James Brown, I went yeah. to see him when I was, because I like groove a lot. I went to see him and um, he just got out of jail then. Mm. And, um, and it was a big stadium mm. and uh, he came on stage and it was just about 20 of us <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the front, yeah. like, hello. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but to be honest, before he came on stage, the band came on stage. Mm. Took a long time until they got into the group. They yeah. got into the group, then he came on stage. So it's sort of like, hey, well, he helped also. But it's sort of like, that being in the moment, that listening to each other, that creating that energy or filling mm, the whole space, mm, mm. takes time. So yeah, that, that yeah. showmanship is not going to help. Mm. It might imagine you've already got that moment and then you go through the showmanship. Okay, good. We're mm. going to scream and go up and down. Mm. Easy. But initially, no, no, you can't do that. You have to like just groove, get that moment, that pulse. Or I've seen like these um, African bands where you have uh, the whole village. I'm not joking. You might have a... Mm. 50 people there on stage, and you're saying, nah, boring, half an hour, boring, three quarters. After an hour, you say, oh, well, yeah. you start getting into the trance, mm. the groove, the people, the dancing, you start hearing, seeing, and the whole stadium becomes just one. And you say, mm. wow, that's what I'm saying, mm. music mindfulness. Mm. And then you've got there the guitarists and the drummers and the, everybody's doing impressive solos. Mm. On top of that, mm. but that, that initial state of, of connecting, mm. Mm. you can't mm. get that through... Uh... No, and it's interesting because you, you, you've just sort of talked about scenarios where, where, where we, we allow things to take time before, before, before really, really the light bulb goes on. And I guess yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's what we're looking for, I guess, or what I personally really enjoy is... is I think we're, we're all, most of the people I work with are really, really, really great musicians. I, I mean, I do a lot of, I did a thing the other day that was just like, it was, it was a composition. It was, it was, but you're, you're making that, comp, you're bringing that composition alive. Yeah. You, you know you're reading dots. You're rehearsing to the point where in performance you can then make that piece a living, breathing piece of music yeah. you're not just reading off a page and orchestras do that you know but generally they do it with very familiar repertoire yeah. and, and I have a huge respect for my colleagues that play in orchestras because they go out and make that they make that Beethoven 5 a new Beethoven 5 for that moment and, and but we also had a culture back in the day where you could happily listen to 40 minutes of a, of a symphony or an hour and and 15 minutes of a, sympath a symphony um, and, and, and be there for the whole time, you know. And, but it would also be, like, on from the very beginning. And so 
we as modern improvisers, what I enjoy as modern improvisers is getting together with a group of people that, and you can tell from the moment you play your first note that you've got a listening thing going on, that everybody is kind of on the same page. It doesn't have to be on the same page as, as players. Or, or It has to be on the same page as listeners to, to turn the switch on yep. right from the get-go. Yeah. And... And that's what we do as professional. That that's what I feel I'm best at in 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 my age of of uh, as a as a musician and as a bass player too. Because I, I'm not playing. I'm you know I'm, I'm, the yeah. bass ba- bass it can absolutely be totally be a virtuosic instrument. But but other virtuosic instruments that are only do that are kind of arguably going to do it better and faster and quicker and whatever. But I'm I'm a listener, you know. I'm, I'm, I, I, that's what I aim to do best. Because I would even add, if we don't listen to each other, if we're not playing listening, mm. uh, there is very little chance of any good music happening as improvisers. Yeah. And uh, the audience got to get totally bored. Yeah. And you have to give it time. You have to yeah. give respect. You have to give a lot of space and just let it flow. You can't force it. It's just you're in the moment, yeah. you're playing, and there's a natural reaction. It has to be natural. It has to yeah. flow. Yeah. It has to flow. Yeah. And then you'll get the attention of the audience. Yeah. 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 Of course, we're all giving us everybody time to actually get into, into that and, moment. Oh, gosh. And, and I mean, how many of those great, great players from, from all genres, you know, from, from 19... 10, 1920 in, in that idiom that may have changed somewhat in, in sort of general delivery and all that sort of stuff but how many greats from from uh, you know King Oliver Louis Armstrong to to you know Lester Young to to Duke Ellington to, to you know to Miles to Bird to to and then to our modernists and and so many you know, there's so many guys I love listening to. You know, I mean, you know, somebody like Larry Grenadier uh, yeah. as a bass player. Um, you mentioned Bill Frizzell, but I mean, all those, all those guys, uh, and so many more. That that oh, the the level of their listening and the level of their dialogue. The I level of the listening, the level of their dialogue. It's uh, yeah. we're not talking about the level of their playing is because the level of their yeah. listening and the level of their mm. dialogue. So. Um, my last observation would be, okay, we're really like, this is what music is about, mm. especially improvising. Mm. Now, suddenly we've got modern trends. Let me just look at, uh, make sure we've got seven minutes left of video. Mm. 30 mm. minutes recording, Max. Mm. Um, so, how do people perceive music nowadays? That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Yeah, like... You know, you've got the social media, you've got internet. Mm. It's mm. sort of like, oh, look what I'm doing. Mm. Ten seconds mm. and, and generally, unfortunately, mm. you've got showmanship. I might be mistaken. Mm. Because I might be looking at that showmanship. I might be a, 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 actually a, a sinner of actually looking at that. But anyway, so um, the perception of music is uh, 30 seconds, one minute uh, performance, high energy mm. and this doesn't work when you play live. You can't. Mm, mm, mm. You can't. So, if our perception, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, if our perception of what music is through all this mass uh, uh, image that we've created mm. of, uh, of this artificial world mm. where it's even going more with the metaverse where we're actually just uh, doing like 10 seconds, 15 seconds or... Uh, 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 and so, now, what is, as educators mm. and as performers... Is there room for? Yeah, yeah. Well, there there is. And, uh, this is, I think, originally the the, the initial um, uh, things we were discussing on our first first meeting, sort of the, the tied into this question and the, the, the musical mindfulness of what what is it? I mean, could, is that a word that's an appropriate descriptor? Um, was because we were we were talking about. Um, uh, Art occupying different spaces. Not all art occupies the same space. So there's there's kind of I think I I, I was talking about also like there's 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 slow cooking. It's not as big as going to McDonald's. 
You know, yeah. McDonald's is still the sort of go-to default fast food kind of option for a lot of people, but there's also a select group of people that choose a, a slow food option. We'll go to, you know. Um, and so I think it's just about, first of all, I mean, it's easy to say, but um, it, being there when people wanted an option. But I think it's also about getting out and, and also talking to people um, there's there's YouTube videos of people who just unpack presents. Um, not not the unpacking a guitar or unpacking a going yeah. and taking, but unpack unpacking a, a, a gift wrap package and, and the or, or wrapping a package or or doing these kind of slow slow things that that people will watch for for five minutes and then you look at them on on YouTube they. They're, they're quite high rating. It's not somebody really? like, oh, here's my latest you, you know, YSL handbag and I'm unpacking and, oh, look at this quality I'm talking about. They're actually just doing simple little things. You know, there's, there's, there, it's the old <laughs> thing of, like, we had screensavers which were just a, a fire burning. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like, there were these, these things um, it, it, it kind of... <laughs> it's the kind of... Not musical screensavers. But we, we have these... Little little moments in in life where we, we where we do absolutely everybody has if we stop and think about it, everybody has these moments where they stop at least for five seconds. I have a mindfulness thing on my watch, yeah. you know, that says, "Hey, take you know one minute to just breathe," you know. Yeah, so yeah. and and we know this from a, a kind of you know the wellness industry t- tries to tap into this and make money out of it. So we all know this. Yeah, we all we all know this. Yeah, yeah. But it's also about we're about, not idiots. About, no. Yeah, yeah. No. It's also saying that that I mean well, that, that this is this is a purpose that music music can do. Music doesn't have to be an an objective a- activity. It can just be purely for the total subjectivity of having a having a sound wash. People have to experience that, mm. and that's what what you said. Now is like mm. go and listen to that. Yeah, go and listen to that music, and close your eyes, mm. and then you will never want to listen to any other thing that that is not as important, because well, you're in that moment with the audience and listening. You'll, you'll know that there's a thing that will do that thing when you want. When you need that thing, it's like a, it's 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 a nourishment for the for the ears and, and the body and the brain and the space, and it brings you back down to just being. Hopefully, yeah, you, you know, you're stating it as a nourishment, you know, to actually uh, to increase to 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 add. I state it as uh, as the blood flow of existence. As a yeah, musician, yeah, I say yeah, that. Yeah. Ooh, I can only do that. I can only play like that. I only I can only listen to that. Mm. It's sort of like uh, that's the way I've been programmed since as, as a child with music. So it's sort of like if I don't do that, if I don't follow that with music, if I don't listen to that, if I don't have a lifestyle in that way, mm. I just uh, fall sick. Well, that's what we that's what we wish to share because that's what we truly. That's 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 what we truly feel. Is the, what gives us the most. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, it's, yeah. And, and it's kind of like, oh, it's just like saying, look, maybe, maybe you might like it a bit too. Like, you know, just share this moment with us. You know, this is what we're doing now. We're not, we're not driven by pointing at people, going, listen. Now listen to this. Now we're selling you this. Now we're doing this and this. No, this, no, this we just, can't do that. It's no. just kind of hopefully a certain sort of. Humility, and I mean, we certainly don't do it for the money. No. <laughs> you know? And uh, and and. Of course not. <laughs> yeah, and, and um, uh, uh, but it's also it's it's also it's always it's always going to have a place. It's always going to have a place yes. because people need those places to go. And mm. if people go out, people might go out. We live near the ocean. Where people might find it when, by going out and doing, you know, swimming uh, uh, ocean out in the ocean, you know, for for an hour. People get it by going out for a jog for an hour. Um, it's also helping the body a little bit, but but by listening to music and or or, or, or whatever um, and being in those moments for however long, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever. 
yeah, hopefully it, it sort of has the same benefits. I think there's also great value in... in and I, I kind of learnt this from, from arts, art, artists. Um, I was thinking about Andy Warhol too because there was a recent Andy Warhol documentary on Netflix, his diaries. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, the Andy Warhol diaries, you know, art, pop, pop art, art is for everyone. Um, it was for the masses, but there's also a kind of art that's that that just needs one person in a room, or even an, an art that is just about the artist doing something for themselves that without any expectation. Van, Van Gogh. I mean, he tried to make some money out of his art, but his art wasn't very wasn't very much acknowledged or viewed by anyone other than him and his people close around him until after his death, you know? So these, these moments of, now that we understand as, as like a, a sort of a, a pinnacle of aesthetic beauty, were actually just incredibly deeply personal moments. But it's still, I find, uh, mm -hmm. the, the only art form uh, that is a true art form is only music for me. Yeah, well... Because, I, because when you're painting, it's just basically just a... Uh, uh, two-dimension representation and music what we're talking about is we're creating a painting amongst uh, with uh, mm. other people at the same time as improvisers well as that's, improvisers, that's yeah. the uh, another I can't remember who said it's something like music music we're, we're dealing in uh, in three dimensions yeah yeah you know we're dealing in in time and space yeah yeah and, in time and space and, and painting and cage, once again cage and stockhausen and people like that we're talking about moving that music from a into a into a third dimension or a fourth dimension you know like taking it from just being a, on the written page interpreted by an orchestra for something to being this thing that in your in this room or in that room that's a different experience and being in this you know moment in time being a different experience to if it was performed in that moment of time or, or, it, it's it's interesting yeah mu music i i I, I come from a family of artists, so I mean, I, I know that there's certain arguments against sort of limiting limiting the definition of art that are that are being pushed around on the edges, which is where we get sort of this art installation kind of idea, this kind of idea of living art, which is very much, I think, also involves music and sound. So there's, you know, we we're talking about. We're talking about music on a video that gets shot out over the airways, but the act of us talking about music is an important part of... If we can understand it as an important part of a process of getting people to listen to our sounds with a different mindset, I know that from, from the way artists talk about art, that can be a very useful, important thing. Talk, talking about music, Frank Zappa once said, "Talking about um, talking about music is like dancing about architecture." That's one of Frank Zappa's quotes, and I was kind of like, to, 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 when I heard that, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, it's right, isn't it?" You know. And then I was thinking, but you know, some buildings make you feel rather funky. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, so uh, yeah. let's have a play then. Yeah, yeah. Bye. 
good, good, good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, fun take. <laughs> good, good, perfect, perfect. So, uh, do you want yeah, to... a couple of things about fix up in pro films. No, no. It's interesting, isn't it? it, it there's, there's lots of music out there that is, is so, so perfected and... And, and but it, but it really is about that conversational thing, isn't it? It's just having a good having a good chin wag, you know. Good fun. Music, musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and how how we can always love playing something that we know know well. It's just like choosing a subject, isn't it? Yeah. And the tune is just like choosing. Well, not even choosing a subject. It's just like drifting into a a topic of of conversation. No. And it's got nothing to do with words, eh? Yeah. You just get into there yeah. and it's sort of yeah. like, just hear all these sounds, all these yeah. chords, all these melodies going yeah. on and, and it's just reacting and I have no idea, we have no idea what comes next. Yeah, yeah. Even though the song is constant, it's a constant structure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it and what, that's, that's interesting is because structure, structure is one of those things, I often, you, Use when when we're talking about free music, and and this was this was Cecil Taylor, you, you know, who, who um, I, I was watching this wonderful um, thing with Cecil Taylor um, masterclass with Cecil Taylor years ago. Yeah. And um, basically everybody was sort of playing, and and then he he said, okay, tell me what you're all doing, you know, and playing for him, you know, and the audience and. And they said, oh, you know, we, they said all the things we would normally think of saying to somebody like Cecil Taylor, you know, oh, just trying to be, you know, there and, and listening and keeping the mind uh, open and, and responding and just, you know, and, 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 and he kind of basically said, yeah, but, to, to paraphrase him, he was like, yeah, but I don't want to see a bunch of musicians up on stage just not thinking, you know. And, and then when he sat down and played, it was so not anchored to a structure, but it was so obviously had structure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's that thing, like it, free playing. It still is telling. It's, it's taking you in in time and space. It's very from hard to play. Planet A yeah, to yeah. planet B. You need you know? great knowledge to be able to play yeah. free. So extreme. so form enables us. To do, to do that, it's it's like a quick little template, like having a tune like Sunday my pencil gun. It just has a, a has it's a quick little template for us. It's like a quick it's like going for a bay run, where you you where you know you could do a walk, you could do another a way of saying it that without structure we can't improvise, we can't yeah. breathe. Yeah, it's sort of like we need a. Um, uh, a vehicle to yeah. be able to start being free. Yeah. Sort of like, yeah. hey, no, 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 you can't just go play whatever. Yeah. No. Here, like, we've only played it, we only played it eight times through, ten yeah. times through. Yeah. But sort of like, well, we still had a half an hour of conversation going on yeah. there. Yeah. To actually yeah. say, okay, let's start exploring yeah. that a bit more that we didn't get into. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's still a lot more to be done there. Yeah. A 